Good morning everybody, Orin J here with another Honkai Star Rail video and today we're going to talk about gear farming in Honkai Star Rail. Specifically, I'm going to look at each 5 star character we have in the game and I'm going to tell you which sets of gear are the best for those characters and which main and substats you want on each one of them. So if you choose to farm some gear after you hit Trailblazer level 40, your farming uh, won't be wasted. Now before I talk about it, some people are going to say in the comment section of this video, I guarantee it, that it's more efficient to farm gear after your Trailblazer level 50. Let me give the counter argument to that. First of all, do whatever you want. It's a single player video game. If you feel like farming gear, go farm gear. I would highly suggest waiting till after Trailblazer level 40 so you can at get access to these orange pieces of gear. But note that I only got one five star drop right here instead of Two, if I had waited till Trailblazer level 50, I would have got more than one five-star drop. Would that have been more efficient? Sure, but guess what? It's going to be a really long time in between Trailblazer level 40 and Trailblazer level 50. So, I like to hit the Caverns of Corrosion a few times every day and start building out my repertoire, repertoire, there's a fun word, of five-star gear. I understand my gear farming will be better later, but even as somebody who's actively using my premium gems and some, a little bit of my fuel to recharge energy every day, I'm still only, what, Trailblazer level 42? I am a long way away from Trailblazer level 50, and I guarantee you I am recharging my energy more than the average player. So if you feel like farming gear, don't let people like do the weird min-max shaming thing that people do and scare you away from farming. It's perfectly fine. Let's go character by character now though and talk about which pieces of gear you're going to want to farm for them. I want to start by talking about the physical MC. This is a character that basically everybody in the game is going to be using. His best set, far and away, is the Knight of Purity Palace. I went ahead and put like a second option up there for Guard of Weathering Snow, but it is a distant second in my opinion. The Knight of Purity Palace is the best one. Main character fire wants defense, main character fire uses shields. This is all over that. Now, main stats and substats. Before we get like into which one of those I want, let me show you a piece of gear. Let me show you a little uh, uh, piece of gear and show you what exactly what I'm talking about. Relics is what it's called. Here is a ring I've got for my Japard. Now, this ring has attack as the main stat. Okay, whatever. But look at these substats right here. These are random on this piece of gear. I got HP percent, defense, critical rate, critical damage. Sure, I don't really want attack on Japard, but every hand piece, or in this case ring, has attack as the main stat. There's nothing I can do about that. So when I'm farming this ring, or a hand piece of gear for him, it's these substats that I'm looking at. And guess what? HP percent and defense percent are very good stats for Japard. So I'm pretty happy with this ring for right now. I would have loved to have seen maybe a little bit of defense on there, like flat defense. No big deal. I'm happy with this ring for now on my Japard. Just know some pieces of gear, like your chest and your um, boots, the main stat is different. You can get a different main stat on there. This piece of boots has defense percentage. This piece of boots has attack percentage. For chest, this chest piece right here has defense percentage. This one has crit rate. So, okay, those can change. Head will always have flat HP. Hands will always have flat attack, at least right now in the game. All right, back to Fire MC. I just wanted to give you that little heads up before I went further on. For the Fire MC, for your body, you're going to want defense percentage, in my opinion, as the main stat. For feet, you either want defense percentage or speed. Speed is a really OP stat. It's almost always worth having on most characters. Maybe like besides Clara, who just wants to sit there and get beat up on. Speed is good on almost everybody. So if you get speed, if you get a main stat speed on your boots with a lot of really good subsets, that could be worth building up. Okay, for your sphere, I'm not gonna talk about where to farm spheres and ropes or which ones to get for each character yet. That's its own video. But defense percentage. Uh, for the main stat, for the Fire MC, and then for the rope, energy regeneration for more ults is also really OP on a lot of characters. And again, guess what? Defense percentage. For substats, it shouldn't be a surprise. 
Fire MC is all about defense and defense percentage. Again, speed really good and effect resist. Like don't sleep on effect resist, especially for a character that's taunting enemies to hit them. It sucks if they get imprisoned or entangled or frozen or all the different status effects. Being able to resist that is a nice like bonus substat to get. You definitely want defense percent and speed. HP is fine too, but effect resist. Don't sleep on that for the Fire MC. Okay, next up, I want to talk about Yang, Yang Qing right here. Now, this is a guy who I think does not have a single best set. In fact, I think you want to mix and match sets with this guy, or you could go for... There's two different, basically here, let me say that again. There's two different four piece sets that I think are very, very good on him. And I think you can mix and match those sets depending on if you get good main stat rolls on different pieces of gear. So what do I mean? You have two options. Hunter of Glacial Forest. This is the ice damage set. It gives you ice damage up and after the wearer unleashes their ultimate, their crit damage increases. That is amazing. The crit damage 25% is actually good on so many characters. It's even better on an ice character like him because he gets that two-piece set ice damage boost as well. Then you have the Wild Wheat. Wild Wheat is uh, just one of the most generically good pieces of gear in this game, especially because it gives speed and attack up. It is great. Like, almost every character likes Wild Wheat. Almost every character likes Wild Wheat. If you just want to farm one thing. If you only want to farm, let's go back to the game. If there's only one set of gear that you want to throw farms at every day, that's just going to be good almost no matter what you get, it's Path of Drifting and the Wild Wheat set. Now, I will say this other one, the Outgoing Healing set, not my favorite, even on the healers. It's just okay for them. So that sort of sucks. But man, oh man, you just won't miss. Wild Wheat, you can almost take advantage of every one of the main stat pieces of gear you get to drop right here because attack increase, speed increase, and basic attack damage is just insane. Even for your supports who spend a lot of fights just basic attacking, Here's 10% more basic attack damage, Branya. Here's 10% more basic attack damage, Natasha. People like that. So keep that in mind. This is a really safe room to farm. Let's get back to Yon King now. So I think you can get either one of the two sets, Glacial Forest or Wild Wheat, or mix and match the two to get the two set bonus from each one. For main stats, he's a DPS user, so you're looking for critical hit rate, critical hit damage. Those are the best body main stats he can get. For feet, I like speed or attack percentage. For his sphere, I like ice damage. For his rope, once again, energy regeneration is really good or attack percent would be good for him as well. Substats, it's all about critical percent. It's all about critical damage. If you can also get speed and attack percentage, you've done it. If you get all four of those on one, oh my gosh, you've got some amazing substats right there. So that's Yon King. Now I'm going to go through these a little bit faster. I'll try to do less asides. We're already like seven minutes into this video. Next up, Welt. Okay, Welt, I think you go with the Musketeer of Wild Wheat for him, even though Wastelander of Banditry is an imaginary damage set. It kind of depends on how you want to play this guy. If you're playing him as your main carry in a group, maybe the imaginary damage set would be better with the 10% imaginary damage set, and when he's Excuse me, when he's attacking a debuffed enemy, his crit rate increases by 10%. If they're imprisoned, the critical damage goes up by 20%. That could be really OP, especially if you were, you know, stacking some like, if you're giving him more of an ability to land his status effect, that would increase his damage a ton. However, I think he's mostly used right now as kind of an off damage supporter. In that case, he's a great candidate for the Musketeer Wild Wheat. Give him that attack, speed, and attack damage. Main stats. This is assuming you're going to play him either of the ways. Crit percentage is fantastic or effect hit rate if you're going for the Wastelander of Banditry set. For feet, speed or attack percentage. His sphere, go imaginary damage. His rope, I like energy regeneration. Substats, speed, really good for him. Any support really, just stack speed. If you've got a character who's like supporting you in any way, let them go more. Going more is OP. Effect hit rate, really good. Again, especially if you're running the Banditry set. Break effect, 
crit rate, crit damage will both help his DPS. Okay, next up, let's talk about Sila. Now, Sila is hard carrying my account right now. I am struggling to get good drops of the Genius of Brilliant Star set, but it is far and away her best set of gear. I think some people will default to the Musketeer of Wild Wheat set early because they've already been farming that room a little bit, and so they might get some good Sila pieces. I do think eventually, though, you will want Genius of Brilliant Stars for her. Quantum Damage Up is amazing, and it gives her the ability to ignore defense. She gets defense penetration. That's so good. For her main stats, you want crit percent, crit damage for your body. For feet, you're looking for speed or attack percentage up. Um, speed on Sila is interesting because she can give herself so much speed, especially if you have her like, uh, I think it's idle on two. You might not need more speed for her, but attack percentage is, that's pretty good. Um, sphere, you want quantum damage and her rope. I like break effect for her actually. She's just always out here doing damage and don't sleep on break effect once um, Silver Wolf comes out and can allow your main carries to break even more enemies' weaknesses. Don't sleep on it. That's what I'm going to say right there. Then, or attack percentage is safe as well. Substats, crit rate, crit percentage, uh, or crit rate, crit damage. Excuse me, I wrote that wrong. Critical hit rate or critical hit damage. Um, attack percent or break effect. Those are the things I like for Sila. Next up, Himiko. Now, the four-piece set for her of the fire damage, I do really like. Gives you fire damage 10%. It also increases your uh, skill damage by 12%. And after unleashing your ultimate, increases your fire damage by another 12% for the next attack. I think that's really good on her. If you wanted to go two and two, if you had a bunch of Musketeer of Wild Wheat stuff farmed up, I think you could combine those two, give yourself the fire damage and give yourself the attack up. Still, skill damage up 12% fire damage up after your ult. I do think the fire smith of lava forging is better than the two and two for Himiko. I don't have her though. I've never got to try this out. That's just what it looks like to me. For her body, I like crit percentage or crit damage. She's a carry. You want them critting and critting harder. For her feet, give her speed or give her attack percentage. I would default to speed. Sphere, no surprise, fire damage. Rope, again, break effect, breaking, really good. And then attack percentage uh, would be fine as well. Substats, you're looking for critical hit rate, critical hit damage, crit percentage. I guess I just wrote this wrong. Crit percentage, when you see that on there, it means critical damage percentage. Why I wrote it wrong, I'm just an idiot. Attack percentage, break effect, or again, speed are good substats for Himiko. Okay, next up, Japard. Now, the guys, look, honestly, for Japard, you, there's only one one set of gear for Japart. There's only one. You don't even, I, I just put an arrow for the second piece because you don't even think about it. You get this man Knight of Purity Palace and you get the best pieces of Knight of Purity Palace you can. Japart only cares about taking turns and having a lot of defense so he can put his shields up. So more ults, more defense, more shields. It's perfect for him. Main stats, you want defense percentage, feet. Defense for percentage or speed is an interesting debate here. He scales so hard off defense percentage, but you do want to get him more opportunities to cast his ultimate. I'm telling you guys, speed boots are almost good on everybody, but defense percentage is his main stat. Go either way. See which one works best for you. For his sphere, I think you want defense percentage. And for his rope, you only want energy regeneration. This man revolves around getting his ultimate off. Get him more ults. Okay, for his substats, again, defense percentage, I think effect hit rate is good for him. More freezes, speed is obviously really good, and defense. Okay, next up, Clara. The character I wish I had more than any other character right now in this game is Clara. I think Clara plus March 7th is just busted good, and I think Clara has two interesting gear options here. Now, I think her best set of gear is Champion of Streetwise Boxing. Clara, March 7th, you need, if you run that combo, you want Clara putting out massive damage, and she will. This set will help her. If physical damage up 10%, that's obviously really good. And after the wear attacks or is hit, their attack increases by 5% for the rest of the battle up to five times. She's going to get that stacked up really, really fast. I think that's amazing. Then, for uh, her main stats, critical damage, critical hit percentage, you want her teeing off and hitting people hard. Attack percentage for the feet, Clara's one of those units. I actually don't care about speed for her. 
I think. I think I just want her hitting harder. So get her attack percentage right there. For her sphere, physical damage up. For her rope, attack percentage. Substats, crit damage, crit percent, attack percent, break effect. I think those are the best ones for Clara. Those are the things I would be aiming for. If you wanted to go for the other set, the Guard of Weathering Snow, like maybe you've been farming gear for Sela and you just have a really, like you've accidentally gathered a really good set of Guard of Weathering Snow. That could be a placeholder piece for you for her. Reducing the damage taken and giving her access to some healing isn't bad, especially if you're running her March 7th and not a healer. Giving her access to a little bit of self-healing wouldn't be the worst thing in the game, but I do think streetwise boxing is the way to go ultimately. Next up, Branya. Man, another character I wish I had. As Sela being my main character, this chick just unlocks Sela in a huge way. I use her all the time as a um, companion piece and it is different. It Sela hits different with Bra with uh, with Branya here in the group. Anyway, what pieces do you want for Branya? I think there's two options here, and I think they're both really pretty good. So Eagle of Twilight line is wind damage 10%, so that'll make her auto attacks hit harder. And then after using her ultimate, their action is advanced forward by 25%. Branya all about manipulating turn order. I think that's really, really good for her. Yo, get her more turns, more auto attacks, more ults. Awesome. Musketeer of Wild Wheat set will give you more speed right and increase your basic attack damage so don't sleep on that but i like eagle of twilight line a little bit better personally for body i think you want crit damage you're not worried about critical hit percent with branya because every time you auto attack it crits so go crit damage for feet speed she's a support character yes it's cool if she can hit harder go speed uh, for her sphere, wind damage is cool. Also, HP percentage is good. Your support characters want to be beefy boys and girls. HP percent, don't sleep on that. Wind damage will help her hit harder, though. And then for rope, I like energy regeneration. More ults, especially, that will be good with the Eagle of Twilight line. And then HP percentage, also good there as well. Substats, crit damage, speed, attack percentage, and break effect are the four I like best for her. Okay, next up, Bailu. Now, Bailu the Little Healer, I think this is one of the characters that Musketeer of Wild Wheat is better on, even though there's literally a set in the game that is for healers. The speed is so important, and Bailu is going to basic attack a lot. She's basically going to be using her ultimate to heal the party and basic attacking to generate skill points. She's a skill point battery with her ult to heal. Yes, she can spot heal with her skill if you need her to, but really, you kind of want her generating skill points for you, and if she's basic attacking, boom, let her go faster, let her get more basic attack off, that's more ults. I like Musketeer of Wild Wheat better than Passerby of Wandering Clouds. I just think, honestly, Passerby of Wandering Clouds, the one extra skill point at the beginning of battle is like, so what? You're going to get way more than one extra skill point by just having a faster character who gets to auto attack more in like a long boss fight or something like that. So I actually like Musketeer better than Wandering Cloud. Main stats. I like outgoing healing for the body, for feet, speed, for um, for your sphere, HP percentage, for your rope, energy regeneration, more ults, and HP percentage. Get her HP up as high as you can. Substats, no surprise, HP percentage, HP, and speed. Okay, that is it for the five-star characters we have in the game right now. I guess I didn't do Trailblazer Physical. Do the physical damage set for Trailblazer Physical. That is going to be your best one. I'm going to go ahead and just run another room right here. I'm trying so hard to get pieces of gear for my Sela that are, like, actually good. The... Now, I do want to end this video by talking about the Trailblazer level 50 thing that a lot of people are going to say. Look, guys, there's um, trace leveling material is very, very important. And I do think after you get to 40, if your thought is I want to farm trace materials instead of gear because it's guaranteed return on my energy investment, I don't think that thought process is wrong. However, a lot of people like farming gear. It's fun to get drops. Getting drops is just cool, and there's a chance. It's it's a gotcha game, so having a chance to do something is one of the biggest reasons why a lot of us are here. So don't feel guilty about farming gear. For me personally, everyone that you see on the screen right here, I have farmed their trace leveling materials already, and I've farmed the materials to like level up their cards, ascend them, all of that. Now I've moved on to gear farming. 
Keep in mind, I use my premium crystals to recharge my energy. So my, like I'm a content creator. All content creators make money off of their videos. Our, like our brains, when we are thinking about whaling, our math is different. We get money from covering the game. So don't feel pressured to do what we do exactly, but just let our videos help you in whatever way they can. And I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Like I said, the next video about gear I'm gonna do is the four star units and which gear I recommend for them. Uh, I look forward to doing that. Now, let's end this video by seeing if I can get a baller piece of Sela gear, which I have got zero of so far in about, I don't know, 15 runs, my luck for her has not been very good. Okay, what did I get? I got a visor. Okay, there's a chance here. It's a head piece of gear. So again, keep this in mind. Main stat's gonna be HP. I want crit damage and critical hit rate as substats. It's not any good. I got defense percentage, effect resist, and attack. Like, that's not good gear. This is something that I will use to level up other pieces of gear. Rip the dream. Okay, what? Yeah, purples. Maybe my purple piece is good. It's not either. Oh, well. And the blues is just leveling fodder. All right, thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I hope your gear drops are luckier than mine. Peace.